Okay, so today we are going to do some new theory, and this is theory we need in order to be able to understand the ideal gas, and it's called the canonical ensemble. So, the reason this is useful, well, we've seen that if you can find the entropy of a system, then you can find all of the other thermodynamic properties. So, we've seen that the function entropy, which depends upon u and some other properties, x, can be used. find all thermodynamic properties. of a system. Okay, and in particular, we looked at the case of a power magnet. Here, x, the entropy depends upon the energy, but it can also depend upon some other things. Like, for example, in a gas, it depends upon the volume of the gas. In a power magnet, it depends upon the strength of the external magnetic field. So this is x here represents other state properties. Okay, and the two examples which we will use in this is that x equals volume in a gas or x equals magnetic field h in a power magnet. So, because I'm going to talk about various different systems throughout the course, x can be anything, okay? If I'm talking about a gas, it can be the volume. If I'm talking about the power magnet, it can be the field, and so on. But it's other things which de determine the entropy. Okay, so that's good. And we've done this for the power magnet. For the power magnet, we calculated this function exactly, and we used it to derive the magnetization, the magnetic susceptibility, and so on. But it turns out that this function, s, is often very difficult to calculate. So for most systems, this, this, this function, s, is too hard to calculate in general. So we need an easier way. And this canonical ensemble is an easier way. So we use the canonical ensemble when it's not easy to calculate the entropy directly from the definition. So, but it is often hard to calculate the entropy directly from the definition okay and remember the definition is the entropy is kb times the log the number of microstates of the system with these state parameters. So if, if we find this, then we, we know everything, but it's often hard to find this. And the canonical ensemble, in many cases, gives you an easier way. So, it's still based upon the fundamental postulate, and it's still based upon Boltzmann's definition of entropy, 
but it doesn't use it directly. We don't directly calculate the entropy from the definition. So these three points just serve to motivate why I'm talking about this thing at all, is, is to give us a new theoretical way of finding thermodynamic properties. So now let me explain what it is. So we suppose that we connect, as we've done many times before, we connect two systems together. So before I've drawn it like this, I put my system one, connect it to system two. Connect here means that we allow them to exchange energy. And we thermally isolate them from the outside. So they can only exchange energy with each other. Okay, and we suppose that there's total energy is equal to U. Then we've calculated before that the probability distribution probability that system one has energy u1 is, I wrote this formula before, I called it p1 of u1, and it's just using the third fundamental postulate, it's just given by the numbers of microstates. So in particular, it's the number of microstates with energy u1 of the first system, multiplied by the number of microstates with energy u minus u1 of the second system, divided by the total number of possible microstates of the whole system. So the total number of possible microstates is a sum over u1 prime of the same thing over u1. u1 prime over u2. u minus u1 prime. So this is it. And we call this equation star. So we've, we derived this equation before, and we're going to use it again here. But in this case, we're going to assume something special about the system. We're going to assume that the first system is the thing that we want to understand. System one is the thing we want to know about. System two is a special kind of system called a thermal reservoir, which is a system which maintains a constant temperature. So the temperature of system two is independent of heat transfers to and from system one. So we suppose that the first system is the one we want to study. And the second system here is a thermal reservoir. So these are often sometimes called heat reservoirs as well. Okay. Now what this means is that it's independent temperature of the system is independent of the energy of the system. The temperature T is independent of energy U2, the energy of the system. This is what we mean, theoretically, when we talk about a heat reservoir or a thermal reservoir. Even if we transfer more heat to the system or take heat out of the system, its temperature remains constant. Okay, so in reality, there are no systems like this. For real systems, if you give them more energy, you always increase their temperature. But you can imagine the thermal reservoir as being something like an enormous bath of water. Okay? And if I put my small system inside this enormous bath of water, then heat transfers to and from my small system 
will not affect the temperature of the water very much because there's a lot of it. Okay? So you can imagine a reservoir as a kind of big body with a very high heat capacity. Right, now we know the definition of temperature in terms of entropy. And this will give us a condition on the entropy and therefore the number of microstates of the second system. Okay, so let's just find out what this means now. We know that if I differentiate dS2 by du2, then this will give me 1 over the temperature, which is a constant. In general, temperature is a function of u. But here is a constant, which means I can trivially integrate this equation. So I get that the entropy S2 is just equal to u2 over t, plus possibly some constant c. I, I just integrate the equation. This is a constant, right? So it's trivial. And we know how to relate the entropy to the number of microstates. This is the Boltzmann's formula. Okay. And therefore, we can write the number of microstates in terms of this thing as well. So the number of microstates is the exponential e to the u2 over kbt plus c over kb. So the point of doing this is we've got a formula for the number of microstates of the second system. This is the formula for the probability distribution of the first system. Now, if I assume that this is a reservoir and that these two systems are at thermal equilibrium, then that means that this system is also at temperature T. So by putting this formula here into this equation here, I can determine the probability distribution of energy at temperature T. And this is the point of doing it. The equation for W2 into the equation for the probability distribution, which is what I called star down there. Okay, and well, let me just write it out. If you do this, you get the, the probability distribution of the first system. W1, you still don't know, so that term stays the same. But here, I replace this term with an exponential. It's e to the u minus u1 over kbt plus c over kb divided by the sum over u1 prime, w1 u1 prime, e to the u minus u1 prime over kbt plus c over kb. Okay, so it looks rather ugly at the moment, but it does simplify. In particular, you can see that both top and bottom are multiplied by e to the c over kb, here and here. So these terms just cancel. And both top and bottom also have u over kbt and u over kbt, so the u's also cancel. So we get that this is equal to e1 of u1 is w1 of u1 times e to the minus u1 over kbt 
divided by this sum. Okay, so this equation is important, and in a moment I'll note some important consequences of it. First, I just want to draw your attention to this thing on the bottom. This thing on the bottom only depends upon the temperature T, right? Because you sum over energies, so it doesn't depend upon energy because you sum over all possible energies. It only depends upon the temperature T. It's a function of T, but... This function of t is determined by the microstate distribution of the first system. So this is a function of t only. It doesn't depend on anything else apart from t. But it's determined by the function of microstates. And I've, we've seen that if you know this function, W1 of U1, then you can find the entropy and therefore find all the other thermodynamic properties. So it's possible, and it turns out to be true, that you can also find all thermodynamic properties from this sum as well. So if you know this thing, you can also calculate all the thermodynamic properties. And this is how we simplify, because often you can calculate this without having to know this explicitly. So this function is important, and this is called the canonical partition function. So let me, let me turn the right down here, can't you? Okay. This is called the canonical partition function. And it's usually given the symbol Z. So we call this Z of T. Okay. So using this definition of the partition function, I can write the final form for the probability distribution is equal to W1 U1 times e to the minus U1 divided by the canonical partition function z of t. So now I want to know some things about this formula. The first thing you can see is that the probability distribution, the probability of U1, is directly proportional to the number of microstates which have their energy. And this is a direct consequence of the fundamental postulate. This is the number of microstates. With the energy. U1. Well, that's the definition of W, right? W is number of microstates. It's also proportional to e to the minus U1 over KBT. So this tends to mean that lower energy microstates have a higher probability. If I draw a graph of this, so this is the probability of the microstate as a function of energy, 
energy of the microstate U1. Then it decays exponentially as a, fun as a function of U. So it decays like this. So this, this function here is called the Boltzmann factor. And what it means is that higher energy microstates have less probability of being chosen, being realized in this thermal equilibrium. Okay, so it tells you that higher energy microstates are less probable. And in particular, this probability is proportional to e to the minus energy of the microstate divided by the Boltzmann factor. So, sorry, uh, they are proportional. Probability is proportional to the Boltzmann factor. Now, this observation relates back to something I asked you a couple of weeks ago on the quiz. On the quiz a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to find what's the difference in energy between the lowest energy microstate, the ground state, and the first excited state. This was a question on the quiz. The reason this is important is as follows. The, the lowest energy microstate has a probability somewhere here, right? Now, if the next energy microstate is very close to it, if it's somewhere here, then it has virtually the same probability. So that means at this temperature, there is a good probability of having higher energy microstates occupied. However, if the, next, if the gap is large enough so that the next energy microstate is over here somewhere, then it has a very low probability of being occupied. Okay. So by comparing this energy gap here, this is delta epsilon, the energy gap between the ground state and the first excited state, by comparing this with Boltzmann constant times temperature, we can see if this state is likely to be occupied. Um, so this question is going to come on the quiz next week. And we can show, for example, using this approach, that at room temperatures, you are very unlikely to excite a vibrational mode in a molecule okay, by comparing the energy of a vibrational mode, which we calculated before, to KBT at room temperature. This turns out to be a very small number. Okay, what else is Okay, the final point I want to make is about this canonical partition function Z. Z of T is the sum over energies U1 times W1 U1 times E to the minus U1 over KVT. Well, in this sum, this W1 is just the number of microstates with energy U1. So I can therefore rewrite this as a sum over microstates rather than the sum over energies. So sum over microstates M of simply the Boltzmann factor, e to the minus energy of the microstate divided by ABT. So here I'm using M to denote a, a microstate, right? Not magnetization, don't be confused. And, and this is the important form, because this form of the sum, where you sum directly over microstates, is often easier to calculate than calculating the entropy directly. So it can be hard to find this function w, but often it's easier to do this sum directly. Okay, and this is why canonical 
ensemble is useful. And finally, I've said it in words, but let me write it down. If you know this function z, then you, you know everything. Okay? You can find all thermodynamic properties. So z of t determines all thermodynamic properties. system. And this is why it's useful. So it's often easier to calculate Z than it is to calculate the entropy directly. And if we know Z, then we can find all of the thermodynamic properties. And this is why we use it. 